Hey guys, how you doing? Anish here, back with another great video, and I want to focus this one on what is, without a doubt, my personal biggest career blind spot. I want to reveal it, I want to talk a little bit about it, and if this is something that you also fall privy to, I'm going to give you some concrete tips on how to start addressing it. You know, um, in uh, the early days of running a business, I struggled a lot. I didn't know what I was doing. Of course not. You know, I, I had no idea how to make a business plan, how to get a client, what type of work to do. It was all a big question mark. And, you know, I largely did it myself, bootstrapping it every step of the way. And things stayed at plateaus for a very, very long period of time. If I was going to make a generalization here, the biggest difference between how my business is, my coaching business is today versus where it was at at the beginning is that at the beginning, I might spend years making a certain amount, working with a certain number of clients, doing a certain scope of work, right? Whereas now, the rate of, of change is way, way, way faster. In fact, where my business usually is at the beginning of a year versus where it's at at the end can, is exponentially higher. And that's been the biggest reason for every success and why we're largely speaking, you know, why I have the privilege of speaking with you today and communicating with you is because we were able to magnify and change and learn and change and execute and learn and change infinitely faster than in the beginning. A big part of that also, I got to say, is that, you know, my wife is a huge part of the running of my business now, whereas early on, it was just me alone, you know? So one person and his failings is, is, is uh, there's an infinitely higher chance of not being able to see, you know, and to be, to fall privy to your, to your blind spots when it's just you, right? Uh, and so obviously that had a, had an effect as well. But the biggest reason, right, when I look back, why things stayed at this unhappy zone, because I gotta tell you, you know, when I was making... 200 or 300 bucks a week, please don't think that I ever wanted that, you know? And if you're uh, facing a career situation right now that is really driving you crazy, right? Like, let, let's say you're in active job search mode right now. You don't want to be unemployed. I know that, okay? There's not a, an ounce of you that wants to be unemployed or in that situation. You want to get out of it as soon as possible. The urgency is not a problem. Same thing for almost any other career situation, right? You want that promotion that you know you've been passed over for one too many times, right? And you want to gun and make a powerful case to your employer that, hey, this is the value that I can provide. This is what I've done over the last year. This is what I want to do in the next year. This is what I need from you guys, right? You, The urgency is not a problem there. Similar to if you're completely reinventing yourself or moving to another industry or doing anything that you feel passionate about. It's not that you want to be stuck there. And yet, for some reason, you are. And this hits people on the career side like it hits nowhere else in your life. Because nowhere is the urgency arguably greater than it is there. And nowhere is the frustration greater. So what is it? For me, my biggest blind spot is the difference between what I'm doing right now and what's actually working. I don't know if you've ever heard that uh, now all rapidly becoming a cliche, the 80-20 rule that, you know, 20% of our efforts account for 80% of our successes. That is so, so true. And yet, when we work at something for a while, there are two forces that can counteract that, that, that logical part of our brain that says, yes. 20% of what I'm doing is accounting for 80% or the majority of my success. What is that 20% and can I magnify that? What clouds are thinking are two things. Number one is just the plain force of habit. You know, habit is a double-edged sword. Positive habits like positive eating habits, working out habits, exercise habits, those are fantastic. They'll change your life in the long term because you're incrementally growing. But there is a negative side to that. And that is if you learn how to do something well or at least proficiently, and you do it for a long enough period of time, there is a sense of comfort 
to doing that. And so a lot of times when you should be learning a new way of building relationships, when you should be learning a new way of progressing the interview or a new way of projecting who you are on the resume or a new way of projecting and utilizing LinkedIn to get results, when you should be feeling the uncomfortableness of learning something new, your mind and your body says, no, 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 no. No, no, that's uncomfortable. That's that's That makes me feel weird. Let me just get this part that I do every Tuesday or Wednesday anyway. Let me just get that out of the way first and then I'll come back to it. Let me just get out the thing that I know first and get back to it. And that's extremely, extremely damaging. The the real obvious one is someone who's like, yeah, Anish, you know, absolutely, I hear you, but rather than deal with that uncomfortableness, let me just blast out my resume to a few more jobs. You know, let me just get that done. And then that becomes the next day, and that becomes the next day. And that's an insidious way where your habits and your routines, regardless of how effective they are, are actually sabotaging your efforts. Because the thing you need to do is the uncomfortable thing. The thing you need to do to get to the other zone is uncomfortable because you can't get to the goal by being exactly the same person that you are right now doing exactly the same things. It does not work. But the force of habit is that big sabotaging influence that says, hey, that's it. That's what it is. That's what it is. That's what it is. Just just do it. Just do this first rather than dealing with that with that discomfort. So that's a big that's a that, that that's a big reason why we can't focus in on what is just the really the 20% that's making making that's accounting for my success and what's the 80% by that logic that I can just cut away. We don't want to do that because habits are comfortable for us, but we need to let go of some of those habits. So that's a big reason for my personal blind spot in this area. You know, the, why am I not changing quickly enough, right? Um, that's a big one, you know, um, habit. And then the other one, you know, is, 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 is fear, you know, one of my earliest uh, mentors, you know, told me, you know, Anish, everyone wants to run a million dollar business, but nobody wants to run a $30,000 business. And the reason for that, and I didn't really understand it at first, you know, I was like, what do you mean? Like, who wouldn't? But now, because I've run businesses that are $30,000 businesses. I had my first year, I, I made a total over $13,000 total. In terms of my, you know, in terms of what I made in my business, so I've got run, th- gone through those, those, uh, those, those places of growth, you know, and I do understand what he means because it seems like a heck of a lot more work to build a thirty thousand dollar business up to a million bucks than to just start at a million bucks. And when it comes to our career, it's exactly the same thing, you know. You have this like big dream of where you want to go next. Like, let's say, okay, I'm I'm gonna get that VP of marketing role, right? And you start putting out your feelers and stuff like that, and, and you're not getting much in the way of response, and it discourages you, and it makes you think, oh my gosh, I need to be doing it a hundred times stronger than I am right now. How am I ever gonna get there? And the gap between that million dollar outcome and where you are right now, which is usually going to be a lot more humble, that can really discourage us. And there's a lot of fear there, you know, being found out. And so we would prefer to just keep doing the things that we, that we're doing, even though it's absurd for us to keep doing it because it's not working because we don't want to face the heavy gap between where we'd like to be and where we are now. And yet you have to understand that every $30,000 business became that became the million dollar business had to grow and learn and grow and learn and grow and learn to get there. And yes, it sped up as things went on. It's never as hard as right at the beginning, but that momentum is pushed right at that beginning from people who had the courage to look and live with where they are right now and look at it and say, that's working, that's not, that can be improved, that can be magnified. If you're not willing to do that and you just want to say, I just want to get to this zone in your career, well, I have news for you. I am a career coach. I've been doing this a very, very long time. No one jumps to that to that level. You got to build to it. You know, it's a game, it's an activity, but it's also something that you need to spend some time in the ecosystem developing and maneuvering and yes, making mistakes. Obviously working with someone like me, you know, the reason people work with a coach is to avoid a lot of those mistakes and jump there, but you still have to learn and apply. There's no way around that. It will not happen without that, you know, without that change and that rapid change. And so that fear is another thing that holds us back. So what I do, you know, when I suspect that I have a major blind spot that is kind of messing with me, you know, and sabotaging 
the speed with which I'm reaching my goals or whether indeed I am or not is I do it in kind of um, uh, three stages, right? So the first thing I do is track. You got to get better with the tracking, right? You got to get better with the analytics. And so for one week, what I will do is I will have like a big uh, drawing sheet of paper. You know, you can use anything, but I, I like to have something big that I can see. And, and for that period of time, the whole week, I am writing down everything that I'm doing. Every email that I'm sending, every call that I'm sending, everything. I'm just meticulously logging it. And it is very weird to do that if you're not in the habit of doing that. But it's actually good just because you want to be accounting for your time anyway. But, but over the course of the week, I literally write down every single action that I take day in, day out, day in, day out, day in, day out, day in, day out. No judgments. No judgments, no changes in that first week. We are purely tracking all every activity so we can see on the board this is everything that I am doing. That is the first week, right? In the second week, I become like a little monstrous robot. And as I am going through week two, and now I have the whole week of what I did last week right next to me, every time I'm repeating a task, I am asking myself, why? Why am I doing this? Why am I doing this? Sometimes it's easy. I am making this sales call because I need to, cl to close a sale because I need to eat or I need to get this, right? Or I am building a relationship with this person uh, at Amazon because I'm looking to get in the door uh, as an HR leader for Amazon, right? Makes sense. A lot of those activities, you're not gonna have an easy answer to. Those are the ones you should circle and, and really spend some time thinking about. What is the purpose behind it? Has it outlived its, its worth? If it's if it really has and it's obviously outlived it, you've got an easy win there. Remove it completely from your week, right? If it's harder to answer, it, it means it merits some more special attention in terms of closer observation as you go through the second week to see what is the ROI here? What am I really getting from this right now? You're going to find a lot of stuff going into that gray zone and that's gray zone stuff is stuff that you need to either look at about either changing or eliminating. This is the, you got to clear out room for the new stuff. You know, because again, you, the way that you are, is not going to get the big thing that you want. If you, if it was, you would be there already. So you have to change. And you change by st first tracking everything, then asking yourself for every single action that I'm doing on that second go around, why? Why am I doing it? And then finally, the third step, now that you've identified and excised some stuff and cleared up some room and you've got some other stuff that you're possibly re-engineering and tinkering with to make it more effective, now we experiment. So for every week after that, in that open space, we start experimenting with new fresh things, fresh tactics, fresh ways to build relationships on LinkedIn, fresh ways to write and communicate, fresh ways to get people on the phone, fresh ways to have informational interviews, right? And obviously working with someone like me or working with whoever, right? But you're, you're bringing in that new knowledge and those systems to use in that space. But that's how we do it. We track, we ask why, and we experiment. We track week one, we ask why week two, and we experiment every week thereafter. And then we go right back into tracking, asking why, and experimenting. Tracking, asking why, experimenting. This is the virtuous cycle that is going to close what I would find, certainly for me, but for many of the people I work with, is the biggest blind spot we have, which is the difference between where we are now and where we are and where we want to be. The cool thing though, going through this process, you're going to learn that you're not actually at stage zero. Many people assume that you're not. There's going to be things that you're doing that are paying off. Magnifying those are going to give you a quick win uh, on this road. So it can be a very liberating thing to do. And one that I would honestly recommend that everyone who has big career dreams gets in the habit of doing. Tracking, asking why, and experimenting with the new. This is the quickest route to change that I know of. And I hope that it's been valuable for you. Let me know if you've struggled with blind spots yourself. What blind spots have you been struggling with? How did you find a way around that? Or is it something that you're still dealing with? Shoot me a comment. Leave me a message. Let me know. I love hearing from you guys. Thank you. I'll talk to you soon.